Hi everyone, I'm Chloe and this is Chrissy and we're from Sky Ting and welcome to Good Moves with Well and Good. Today we're going to do a hip opening sequence and we love working the hips because they're the largest joint of the body but for a lot of us they're the joint that gets a lot of stuff stuck in it. So we like to carve out, clear out, make space and this sequence will leave you feeling really good. So to get started, we're gonna start just with a simple cross-legged seat. You can put right shin in front of your left shin. Hands can rest on the knees, on the thighs, hands can be on the floor, and you're just gonna do some easy circles around yourself. And we love to put our imagination into our practice. So for this, and especially during this uh, time, we've been baking a lot and cooking a lot. So we love metaphors that make sense to us. And so you can imagine if your pelvis was a bowl full of some kind of something, like a, a batter for pancakes, or Chrissy's now like a pro cake baker, so maybe it's cake batter, and you're just stirring around and trying to get any little lumpy bits out, and you really wanna think about going the full range of a circle. So go one way and then circle the other way. This isn't anything too technical, and there's no real right way to do it, so you kind of feel out in your body what feels good and how your body needs to move today, and then after the circles in two directions, an easy walk forward into a fold. So maybe it's your hands on the floor, maybe you can drop down, Chris, he'll show her elbows on the floor. Your amount of range is perfect. You don't necessarily wanna try and overextend this early on in practice. This is more just you warming yourself up, but do start to let your breath tap in lower and wider. So taking full inhales, full exhales, as if the breath could fill up into the belly and even down into the pelvis if you can use your imagination to reach that far. Let's do one more low cycle of breath in. And exhaling the air out. Start to walk your hands back, lift your chest up. And then hands behind you, lean back on your seat. Just let your legs come with the soles of feet together, knees butterfly open for what we call Baddha Konasana. And then knees together, and for a moment, just let your legs extend all the way out to undo that fold of the knees, what we call Dandasana. One more time, knees into your chest, and this time left ankle in front of right. So you cross the legs the second side, and once again back into those easy circles, stirring the pot, stirring the bowl of batter around, and you can switch metaphors or you can stick with the same if that makes sense. You can think of this circle as like the face of a clock and you wanna hit all points of the clock circle. So every number, every second, even on the face of a clock you're hitting and then circle the other way. And sometimes it's interesting when we do these circles, you might find like arenas that have slight glitches, like areas that you kind of avoid and skip over. So maybe you go a little slower and you really try and find the full circumference, the full range. So you're letting your mind travel down low into areas that sometimes we honest just avoid. Back through center and then you're gonna walk yourself forward again, just that easy fold, elbows dropping down to the floor if you can and then taking a few cycles of those low and full breaths. See if you can already start to soften the jaw, soften the expression of the face. You know, no one's watching you, except for if you're Chrissy, then everyone's watching you. <laughs> <laughs> but you'll let that expression of the face soften. There's oftentimes a correlation with tightness in the hips, with tightness in the jaw. So maybe you open and close your mouth a few times. And then hands begin to walk back and you'll lift your chest up. And one more time, hands behind your hips, soles of feet together, knees butterfly to open. And then draw the knees in, let your legs extend out, just undoing that fold of the knees. And then this time, knees in, cross ankles, doesn't matter which one, roll over the feet, just simple hands and knees. Simple tabletop shape, so your hands are set up under the shoulders, your knees are set up under the hips, spread those fingers, press the knuckle pads of the hands down, and then press the tops of the feet down too. We'll do a few cats and cows in our spine, so you'll inhale, let your belly drop, let your chest lift, buttock bones lift up, and then exhale, drop the head, drop the tail. So from a cow spine, from a cat spine, inhale, you'll drop the belly, arch the back, open the chest and exhale round the spine drop your head and drop your tail let's do that one more time inhale arch the back open the chest collarbones nice and broad here as you exhale round the spine navel pulling back up and in 
Come back towards a neutral setting, so lengthen the tail back, the crown of the head forward, and we're gonna take just our right leg straight out to the right side. Right foot can be in line with the right hip, toes pointing forward. Yeah, arrange your space if you need to. Hands are gonna stay on the floor. You're gonna keep the left knee, left foot where it is, and you're just gonna start to circle around and let your right knee bend as you go out to the right side, and then the right leg straightens as you pull over to the left. And this is a really nice moment to kind of get low and as we like to think about it, like animalistic, close to the ground, very primal, and the hips are part of uh, what we like designate as like the first floor of the body or like the basement floor of the body. So it is getting closer to the earth and feeling that sense of holding ground. So allow yourself to take up some space as you stir a circle the other way one more time. And then you're gonna come back through center. Keep the right leg out as it is. And then hands are gonna walk back slightly. You're gonna start to pull your seat back towards the heels. And you'll take a child's pose with the right leg still extended out. So left side of the seat meets the left heel. Right leg is still extended out. And maybe you can reach all the way forward like Chrissy's doing, but maybe again, you keep yourself a little more propped up. You work at whichever range feels good for today. If the right ankle feels funky, I'm gonna show it right next to Chrissy's seat. You can flex the right toes up towards the ceiling. Take one more cycle of breath in. And exhale. Shift yourself back forward, and then we're just gonna trade out right into the second side. Right knee underneath the right hip. Left leg extends out towards the left, and again, you take those circles. And you can let your shoulders and your arms get a little more involved. So maybe you bend your elbows as you go around as well. And let your spine carve in a circle so it can have that mixed feeling of cat and cow as you circle around. Stir the other way. Let the breath travel smooth and easy as you do. Very nice, and then keeping left leg out to the side, you'll pull your seat back, come through to that child's pose shape, right seat to right heel, maybe you flex the left toes to the ceiling if you need a little relief for that knee, and then any amount you take it as a fold. Really nice big stretch for the inner line of the left leg, opening up deep into that left hip crease. And then pull yourself back forward, back through hands and knees. So swing that left knee back underneath you. One more, cow spine, arch the back, open the chest. And then you'll tuck your toes, lift your knees and hips. I'm gonna let Chrissy show it, downward facing dog, hips come high. And then let's take a moment to just pedal out our legs in our dog stance. You can shake your head out too, so let the neck release. Yeah, and just exactly moving hips a little side to side so you start to feel the connection of the hip pull to the outer line of the waist, down the outer line of the legs. And then you'll find yourself more or less at center, even stance between two hands, two feet. Energetically reach those heels down to the floor as you lift your buttock bones high towards the ceiling. Take a nice big breath in through your nose and then now open mouth, exhale, clear it out. Yes, good, let's do that one more time, inhaling through your nose. Open mouth to exhale. Take the right leg, lift it high towards the ceiling. Let your knee bend and the heel hangs to the seat, opening the right hip up to the side. And then draw the right knee forward and step the right foot all the way through alongside the right thumb. Tap your back knee down to the floor, heel toe your right foot wider to the right side. And then you can turn your right toes out like a ballet first position, exactly. From here, easy circles again. Just let those pelvis, uh, those pelvis, that pelvis, your pelvis circle around one way. Yeah, I don't know, we're getting creative with our language here. And circle the other way. And now we'll pull, we'll pull forward with our hips and come into a lizard pose. So your back knee's gonna stay on the ground and then you'll see any amount you can drop those elbows close to the ground. So Chrissy's gonna go all the way down. I happen to have a yoga block nearby. If you have you know, some prop work and you wanna use it underneath you, elbows can rest on something to give you a little more of like a lift of the earth up towards you. From there, tuck your back toes under. Lift your back knee up as the back knee lifts, the thigh bone lifts higher towards the ceiling. And then let's think a little more of like a back bend for this. So sternum reaches forward, chest reaches forward. Take one more cycle of breath in. And exhale. 
Good, hands come down underneath the shoulders. If you have that block, just move it off to the side and then tap your left knee down to the floor. Take your left hand a little bit wider, maybe to the edge of your yoga mat or even on the floor next to it. Right hand on the right knee, start to twist your chest open to the right side. Take the right arm, reach it up towards the ceiling. If it's available, bend your back left knee, reach the right hand back and catch for the top of that foot. Torso turns, gaze turns up towards the ceiling. Pull the right left heel, part of me, in a little closer towards your bum. One more cycle here, breathing in. And exhale, release the foot back down to the floor. Bring both hands down underneath your shoulders. Tuck your back toes, lift the back knee. Plank position, simple, step it back. And then simple, hands and feet stay where they are. Seat lifts up and back to your downward facing dog. Left leg lifts high towards the ceiling, knee bends, heel hangs to the seat as you let your hip open to the side so you get that space on the left side. And then pull the knee forward and lunge the left foot all the way through. Good, starting with the back knee tapping down and then heel toe your left foot a little wider towards the left, toes can turn out and then maybe the elbows, nope, you were right Chrissy, hands stay on the floor and just circle around. I'll do it with her. We all need work on our hips these days. Circle one way, and then circle the other way. And now we'll get to take our lizard pose. So you'll keep your torso, your hips forward. Maybe you drop down all the way to the ground with those elbows. Otherwise, if you had that prop work, you can settle your elbows on a little bit more height to bring the earth up towards you. And then opening the chest, looking forward, tuck your back toes, lift your back knee, and think of that whole front line of the body getting a little longer. So reach the heel back, reach your sternum forward. Vision extends out in front of you. So if you were to think of yourself as like a lizard in the wild, you're not a lizard that's gonna be looking at the ground, you're gonna be looking out into the world. Let's do one more cycle here, breathing in. And exhale, you'll let the knee tap down. You'll bring your hands back underneath the shoulders. And then from here, you're gonna take the right hand slightly wider, left hand on the left knee. Turn your chest open to the left side. You either stay here or taking that left arm, reach it up, reach it back, bend the back right knee, catch for the top of the foot, and then take it as a quad stretch. So we're thinking today of the hips, not just as like the outer hip line is something we wanna open, but the whole range, the whole circle of the hips. It's a ball and socket joint, so we can open up the front of the hips and the back of the hips and the sides of the hips. Let's do one more cycle here, breathing in. And exhale, you'll release the foot back, bring both hands down to the floor, tuck your back toes, step it back through plank pose. And then from your plank position, this time bend your elbows back, lower straight onto the belly. Just a little bit of a back bend to help open up the top of the chest. Take your hands slightly wider than the mat. Elbows point up to the ceiling, beyond your fingertips and then lift your head and your chest away from the ground. Beautiful, and then release it back forward and down. Two more of those, just a rolling cobra shape. Inhale, you lift up, drawing further away from the floor. Beautiful, Chrissy. Exhale, release it back down. We've got one more cycle here. Inhale, you lift. And exhaling to release back down. Bring the hands right alongside your ribs. Push yourself back through hands and knees, tucked toes, hips high, downward facing dog. Taking your right leg right up and back behind you, knee bends, heel hangs to the seat. From here, right shin slides across the top of the mat for a pigeon pose on the right. Now, if you have prop work at home, you're welcome to grab for a pillow to put underneath your seat, or if you wanna put a pillow underneath the chest as we take it into a fold, any variation of pigeon pose that you know and you love to do. Another variation you could take if pigeon pose doesn't feel good for your knee, your foot, your ankle on that front leg, come to lie on your back first. And then you'll take your right foot over on top of the left knee, like a figure four shape. Draw your left knee into your chest, interlace hands behind that left thigh, and then drawing the left knee in as you press the right knee away from you. Any variation you're taking, you'll have two more breaths. Soften the jaw again, if you find that's coming back into the equation. And then you'll walk your hands back up if you're in that folded pigeon, uncross your ankle and rock up towards the seat if you're in that double uh, on your back figure four shape. And then from here, back left leg is gonna swing forward and around in front of you. 
From here, we're gonna take a double stack of our shins, what we call our double pigeon or ankle to knee pose. And that, like Chrissy's doing here, is gonna be the stacking of the left ankle on top of the right knee, the left knee right over the right ankle. I'm gonna show a variation like what we did earlier in practice from just seated upright. If your hips are super tight, this might be the best variation for you today, so it causes less strain in the body. Sit up nice and tall. You might stay upright. This might feel like plenty here or walk it forward into a fold. So if you have a yoga brick and you can bring it underneath your forehead for your head to rest on something solid, that's great. If you don't have a yoga brick around, you can always release down onto your elbows. And then you'll bring your hands together and let your forehead rest on the palms like this. Either way, you're here for one more cycle of breath. and then you'll walk the hands back. Lift your chest up once again. You can move any props out from underneath you so your mat is clear. A variation for transition that we really love out of this ankle to knee is gonna be taking your top left foot, swinging it all the way back behind you. So you're rotating back into a pigeon pose and then hands press at the top of your mat. You'll tuck your left toes under and step your way back, just simple downward facing dog. Take a moment, pedal out your legs, shifting the weight a little side to side. And then we'll move right into the left side. So left leg lifts, knee bends, heel hangs, and then slide it forward into that pigeon pose on the second side. Remember, if pigeon doesn't work for you, turn yourself over onto your back and take that figure four shape, left ankle this time over on top of the right knee any props you like to support yourself. So Chrissy's showing not only something underneath her pelvis, but having bricks underneath the chest and forehead can be a really nice way to just be super supported in the shape. So it feels less like your pigeon pose is a splat down on the ground, but rather keeping form and structure. Once again, some slower breaths. Let the breath be welcomed down into the lowest part of the lungs so you feel that movement of breath through the belly and down into your pelvis. Good, and then we'll take one more cycle here. Walking your hands back to lift your chest up. If you're lying on your back, just rock yourself up towards the seat. And this time it's the right leg swinging forward and around for either that double stack of the shins, ankle to knee, double pigeon pose, or doing just that simple cross-legged variation, right shin this time in front of left. Sit up tall, lengthen out of that low back space, and then walking forward any amount if you're taking the fold. Elbows resting down, forehead resting down on something. And you might find that one side is an entirely different conversation than the other side. And that's just part of the body. We're, you know, symmetrical beings to an extent, but oftentimes with the two sides of the body, there's a lot of asymmetry. So it's a great way to get to know yourself better to start to understand how the body is storing information for you to continually look to find and understand. You've got one more deep, low cycle of breath in and out. Walk yourself back upright, chest lifts. You can move props that are in front of you off to the side. One more transition, right shin back behind you, right leg back behind you through that pigeon pose. Really rotate, rotate, rotate. And then hands at the top of the mat. Step your way back, downward facing dog. Last dog of your practice. From here, you're gonna come forward to a plank pose, tap your knees to the floor, and then cross at the ankles, extend your legs forward, come to have a seat. Yeah, I know that was a little more complicated than it needed to be. And then scoot yourself forward on your yoga mat, and you'll come to lie on your back. Soles of feet can come together, knees can butterfly open. If you have yoga bricks or uh, even just two pillows, you can put them alongside the outer thighs to support. We're not gonna be here very long, but just a final moment of rest where the body can lay long and you can feel maybe the release of the front of the hips a little bit more. Good. 
You're welcome to stay resting a little longer, but if you're ready to come out, draw your knees together, curl over to a side, roll up to a comfortable seat. Perfect. So with this hip work, you know, it's a great way to help the body recover after maybe an intense run, an intense workout, when you're feeling tight. But really for us, the hips are such an emotional storehouse that by working and opening them, we often find there's a lot of relief and even some mental clarity. So we highly recommend working on your hips whenever, wherever. Um, for more of these videos, you can always subscribe to Well and Good, and we so appreciate you tuning in today.